Hey everyone, just um, testing a couple of things before we get started. Uh, is the audio coming through okay for everyone? Oh, low, okay. Hold on. Okay, is this better? I'm keeping it a bit low because there is pandemonium outside. It's the um, tail end of Diwali, so there were firecrackers going off like in complete chaotic patterns. And apparently some, uh, some people decided to take it to the next level. So, all right, I'm gonna uh, get started in just a moment. Let's see. All right, so uh, uh, tomorrow we're going to be shipping build 6770. That's the, quite possibly the last EAP. Uh, after that, we're going to go straight on onto the release candidates, which will be a, a couple of builds where we finalize everything and you know mop up the last remaining bugs. And then uh, it's release time in a few weeks. Um, uh, we'll have exact dates uh, in, in a few days as soon as we can. Uh, figure out what's remaining because again it's for us it's not about like let's set a date and release it then we just want to make sure we can uh, ship a solid product so whatever you get it's it's usable and you can go into production immediately so uh, in uh, uh, the, the effort to get everything finalized one of the things we had been working on slowly on the side was the interface and uh, some of you who have been beta testing for a very long time might remember we had this really um, white and blue interface uh, a long time ago. Then we had a darker one and then uh, uh, the the most recent one. And then now we, we have changed it yet, yet again. And it's part of this whole um, iterative development process where we have basically we're just um, in a way having the early access program helps us see what you guys like. Uh, and and more importantly, what you may have to struggle with sometimes. And so by learning from all that kind of anonymous data, we are uh, constantly, constantly trying to see what we can improve. And one of the things in the interface was um, just just um, cognition or just uh, you know being able to know what something is the moment you look at it. So um, let's let's get started. I'm gonna run the daily build. And first of all, you'll see it's a, a, a brilliantly fast startup. Uh, takes like less than a second to get up here. And then uh, the rest of the engine initiates based on what you want to do. So that also makes that startup a bit faster. Uh, the new startup uh, screen is a bit more modern and represents some of the other changes we have made. But most importantly, you can quickly see what your, um, you know, what file you want to open or what you want to do. So. I'm going to, um, you know, you can create any new files here or open a quick store, but I'm going to go into a file that I already created for absolutely no reason at all, except that it's nice. Uh, actually, it's not nice. It's, it's I had nice mountains, as you might have seen in the file names. This is an awesome folding terrain. So first of all, you can see the interface looks a bit different. Uh, in some ways, it still retains the the overall look that it had but in other ways we have redesigned it uh, from the ground up and one of the most noticeable aspects of that is uh the sidebar the property sidebar and you can see it it has completely new sliders uh and uh, more importantly color coding and so uh, what we want to do is just have color coded groups um coll and collapsible groups so you can just quickly recognize what's going on and uh, you know, be able to quickly switch between nodes and know what you're changing. Now, all of the functionality is still pretty much the same. You still have your little preview on hover, so you know exactly what um, value will be set when you click. And for fine tuning, you can always right click and get this interface where you can uh, use micro increment buttons and so on. But overall, the uh, you know, this has a better hit area. 
uh, and uh, overall responsiveness should be better as well. We also have, um, this is a tiny thing, but useful sometimes. We also have little um, unit symbols. So when things are in um, percentage, which is another thing we've done, everything that was in um, decimals uh, or just, you know, scalar values like zero to one, uh, we've changed them to a percentage. So you can now have zero to 100% on those. And then in others, there will be meters and degrees and so on. Uh, the other uh, 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 difference is the toolbox. Now that's something we've tried several different things and we've asked uh, a lot of you questions and you guys have been, you know, so great with your feedback. And, you know, we, we, uh, sometimes we, we aren't able to act on something you tell us immediately, but we do log all of it and we go through all of it every time we're thinking of, uh, uh, you know, making design decisions. So, uh, first of all, the icons weren't helping as much as, um, you know, they could have. And so we are now giving an option to not show icons and instead have these um, category symbols. And you can then just read the names. Uh, you can also accommodate a lot more in a small space. And of course the groups are still collapsible, so you can keep things collapsed and they'll remember what uh, you know? What your collapse status was, uh, and uh, the rest of it is still the same. You just drag, drop, and it just works, and has new colors. So uh, another small but uh, uh, like the tiny things that we are doing is, uh, you know, obviously these um, splitters were not easy to find, so they are now highlighted. And of course, here you the sidebar is a different color, so that will help as well. And then the buttons got a makeover as well. So we're trying to show importance by whether something is flat or raised and in raised button groups, uh, you know, they can be grouped together and the most uh, frequently used things can be uh, uh, more visible because they're, they're a little lighter. And one of the things uh, that we were able to implement based on your feedback was a suspend button. So you can now suspend the engine. So you can go in and you know make whatever changes you want to heavy nodes or well any nodes i'm just going to go back to full change the scaling and then when you're ready you turn it back on and it will apply all the new settings uh let's see what else did we do i've been in it for so long that i don't uh, I'm, I'm unable to differentiate what's new and what's not uh, we've had a build with this for a couple of weeks now and have been playing with it and so far it's we're enjoying it and um hopefully you guys will too and anything that you still want us to improve you know once you try this out let us know and uh you know we'll, we'll do our best to get it in and um oh yeah so another thing that we wanted to add uh is ui scaling so right now this scales based on your dpi so my DPI currently is set to, I think about 125 and, uh, but sometimes that's still not enough. So you can, let me see, let me see like something so we can see the change right now. There's this slider here, which may undergo a few design uh, changes by tomorrow, but there's, uh, this is your scale slider. And when you increase it, the entire UI becomes scaled and this probably looks a lot better on a 4K or 8K display, but you get the idea. This is like whatever you want it to be. And it's pure vector. It'll scale uh, to whatever uh, screen size you have. Uh, there are obviously, uh, you know, plenty of, uh, let me make this smaller so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, there are plenty of other changes uh, as well under the hood. Uh, as always, we tried to make a few things faster. Uh, and erosion, Daniel's been working hard on this, so there are lots of uh, subtle changes here and there. But most importantly, um, one of the missing things was uh, erosion would not show progress in certain instances, and then it felt like you know it took a lifetime, which it rarely does. So now, when you change erosion, uh, uh, or sorry, when you apply erosion, it will show you progress in in all instances. Uh, same thing for snow and um, most other devices. The few that still don't have progress, we're working on it and, and we'll have it soon. Uh, 
And then uh, the last couple of builds, there were a few issues with mask. So those have been fixed as well. So you should be able to build properly. And uh, even the build engine has undergone a few uh, minor changes. So overall memory efficiency is gonna be better. And then as we were redoing everything with color coding, we also decided to reorganize because as we started developing, it was, uh, you know, we would get great ideas or you guys would give us great ideas and we would do our best to implement it. And then eventually you would end up with a very cluttered node. And um, I think one of the, the most cluttered nodes is uh, Biome. So let's see, where's Biome? Uh, that's undergone changes. So you can see it's, it's very easy to read and follow uh, and things are divided into groups. Uh, you can see the same thing happen in erosion. So, you know, if you're not messing with something, you can just close it. Uh, Gaia will remember your settings, you know, uh, uh, per node and what you've changed, uh, what's collapsed, what's expanded and so on. And then with this, we can now have, um, you can see how the color coding works here. So you can easily identify between these three sliders. And then also you can, if you don't wanna mess with something, you just turn it off. So um, with this, hopefully you'll be able to uh, work uh, more efficiently in Gaia. Now there are some things in Biome, I know I get asked about this a lot, is like, uh, well, first is of course, how do you use Biome? And the second is, uh, you know, what does this or that do? Well, Biome still is a little um, undercooked. We're, we're still working on a few, uh, pieces uh, and we need to uh, merge them into our main code base so you will soon get full functionality but for the essential part I just want to show you quickly how to use it so let's say you have this terrain and um, let's go see how this terrain is made and I'm gonna switch to 1k just so we can get a more um, uh, you know more detailed preview Okay, so this is our general terrain. Uh, well, it looks a bit different because I changed some of the settings, uh, but it, it's fine. I'm not gonna, you know, really revert uh, to anything. I'm just gonna, I'll try one thing. And then we can just go and add biome. I'll show you how, you know, you could use it very easily. So um, that, that was actually the main thing. Uh, I was working on a bunch of different things and I had to create textures and I would just do the same old things over and over again and then would have to use a couple of different applications to get the right kind of um, uh, texture maps I wanted. And so figured biome would be a great way to encapsulate a very large part of that process. And so biome, as the name suggests, is, is about growing things and uh, it's, uh, it's going to be like water based always. So to create biome, you need to give it water. Uh, and, uh, uh, let's see, I know some of you guys are, uh, have questions. I will definitely get to those in just a moment. Um, I'll, I'll just finish this first. So please don't feel like you're being ignored. So, Okay, first I'm gonna create a biome node. Just leave it to the side, it's okay. Not gonna do much to it right now. And then uh, let's make some water, uh, or water source rather, for biome to uh, build on top of. And usually, um, this is how I do it. So either flow or velocity is great. I'm, I'm just gonna pick velocity in this case, but uh, you know, you can you can pick either. They both have different um, useful things. Like with velocity, you get rainfall in a way, and with flow, you just get water flow. And so, because I want this to be a bit more uh, a starker on on this side, uh, I'm going to use velocity. So let's see. This is this, just the default is fine for now. Uh, the second thing I want to do is use the growth map. And again, I'm putting it on our height field so it can read the height data and then create uh, its map uh, from there. So with the growth map, it's basically creating uh, places where vegetation would grow. Right now, this is it's, it's growing everywhere. It's, you can see it's pretty intense. Uh, if I change the slope, you can see just a little bit of a difference. It's now spreading everywhere. Uh, and it, and uh, I'm just gonna uh, go half on the duration just so you can see the difference. 
So there you can see it's it's a bit uh you know almost random looking it's uh it's like the vegetation uh you know spreading everywhere and I'll, I'll go into a lot more detail on this uh in a in a, a technique tutorials uh a technique tutorial series that we've just begun but for now let's just this should be sufficient so you take growth and velocity and I'm going to press F8 which combines the two of them or you can do it manually uh let's see i want to see this is a mask so there it's combining the two so yeah we're getting, getting some decent things uh what i also want to do is maybe highlight some of the rivers so i'm going to take uh let's see an auto level map uh let's see combine it with the flow from this one and again show us mask that's good we just want this much and then uh, I can add it to yet another combiner. So let's see. This goes here and this goes here. So not bad, a bit dull though. So I'm going to switch to add maximum or actually rather I'm just gonna go to uh, screen just so we don't go completely overboard and then now this gets bumped into the input for bio and the visualization should be our height field so it's uh, it's this one and so you can see it's now taking the water flow data and using that to uh, create uh, a vegetation map and the lowlands basically you get to divide the terrain vertically into three groups the lowlands midlands and highlands so if I bring the midlands down you can see the lowlands go only up to here then it's the midlands and if I can bring the highlands down you see it starts adding uh, you know rock and snow so in the in the highlands rock will take over uh, more than um, you know uh, arboreal elements like uh, trees and so on not even uh, conifers conifers would be more towards the midland uh, so but that's that's a bit too much or then again depends on what kind of things you're making so you could go really low with this or instead you could just turn it off and that part doesn't get processed and that is a bug, so that's why it's not <laughs> it's still processing. So I'll just leave it on so we can control it. Uh, bring the lowlands in as well. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to fix that bug uh, by tomorrow for the for the new build. So you can see we're getting a bit of snow, and we're getting uh, you know uh, it's the the map is a bit dull. It's not like totally bright. So let's say okay, this is good. And this is, of course, this is not meant to be your final texture map, not at all. Uh, so now we're going to change the colors a bit. And that's also pretty simple. You can see everything is represented uh, in hard colors because in a way, this is like a super splat map. Uh, and so if you were to export this and then uh, there will be tools for this soon, both by us and some of our really cool partners. But let's say you're using uh, uh, different uh, texture maps uh, you can these are because all of these are hard colors they can become masks and in maybe a build or two you will be able to save all the different um, uh, biome zones as individual black and white masks and then you can combine them however you want and then you can just take it into your um, you know game or uh, DCC app however you want and then just replace each pixel with an actual uh, material uh, and so we'll go, go into details on all of this uh, in a little bit. But uh, so here, what I want to do is I'm, I'm not really happy with this sand everywhere. Uh, so I'm just going to go find this subtropical desert. And this I can change to anything. I'm going to go for something dullish like this. So you can see that changed everywhere. And so that's a bit better. And I also don't want snow here because I'm going to simulate that myself later. So again, go to snow and you can again, make your own color if you want. 
that's too dark. Okay, something like that works. And so now this is kind of like a base texture, unless you use it as a super splat path. So for now, I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna use this as a base for creating another texture. So let's see, let's get some space so I can add, uh, whoa. Zoomed in the wrong place. So I'm gonna get a sat map node and I'm gonna uh, just, uh, let's see, I'm gonna colorize the wear from the erosion. For the visualization, I'll go, I'm just gonna, let's see, I'm just gonna rename this. I'm gonna call it uh, final, just so I know what node I need to connect uh, with. Let me put it up here a little. So anyways, okay, I'm in my sat map uh, node and there's plenty to choose from. Uh, let's see, oh, I don't need any of this. Let's try a couple of different things. That's not too bad. Cause I'm looking for something that we can merge with our uh, biome. So, all of these are too red, deserty. Uh, maybe something like this. Oh no, that's still too brown. Uh, okay, I think I'm gonna go back up and pick one of the greener ones, like this or this. Oh, this one should do. Oh, let's see, maybe this one. No, I'm just gonna go back. Um, this is again not the final version as it is, so it's not a big deal. So this again, I'm just gonna select these two and F8 to create a mixer. So now you can see we we're getting a bit of both. The the sat map is showing through, and let's see if we can make it a bit more. So there. Now that's something that you know sometimes you may have to um, uh, work on is like the sat map looks too clean, like that is okay as something to start with but that you would never want this material shown on your um on your terrain but then you combine with uh, combine it with biome and then you start getting like a variations uh you can also choose your blend mode so let's say maybe you want to go to oh that's too much uh maybe not multiply uh, i'm gonna go for, for min and so you know that help makes it a bit dull So anyways, I'm, I'm gonna go back to blend, just keep it as it was. So that's good, that's that's just one. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna create one more. And this time I'm gonna use Surfacer. Um, or actually I should have just dropped it on, where did Surfacer go? Okay, there, I should have just dropped it on final so it connected itself. So with Surfacer, uh, there are a couple that I really like, like Wind Streaks is good. Gives you all these lines, I'm gonna increase the strength. So that's cool, because this is so dull looking. You wanna have a bit of something on the edges. And so I'm gonna pass that on to a clutter node. It'll map it to a gradient. Uh, that's, that's a bit too um, white, I think, too bright. So, okay, this is good. And combine these two. Oh, definitely not that much. So there you have a bit of this. And then again, we still have the same components uh, in growth uh, or the growth and the velocity components that we used in our bio. So you could just as easily get a, a sat map node and hook it up to um, the growth. Let's see, visualization goes to final. And this one, I think we could go for something a bit different than the previous one. Maybe not this, but let's see. Let's go hunt ourselves a gradient. Oh, okay, that, that might work. So get these two, mix. 
And I apologize right now for the ugly, ugly graph. I'm not organizing things as I should. Let's see, let's try to get a good blend between the two. So that's not bad. And then now I'm gonna go and blend it again with biome. Let's see. Just a little bit. And so this is a, a you know a usable texture map, especially if this is distant, you may be able to use it as is. Uh, the noise that you see here, that's only because I was too lazy and I didn't add a floor. Uh, so it's flat, it's like it's that flat. Uh, otherwise you'd be able to see so much more. So, but this, this gives us, uh, if I increase the brightness, you can see this is already usable, especially if you have a distant terrain. And let's see, it's on a few different uh, sunlight angles. This is something I love about terrain folding. It's like these these awesome slanted slopes that it creates. And so this is more or less ready for export. Uh, and that's all I have to show for today. There will be, hopefully there'll be more stuff tomorrow. Not sure I'll, I'll be able to live stream it, but we'll definitely post. And um, uh, we'll also have a blog post coming out with a bunch of things. And, um, Let's see. So, okay. Let's see. There was a, there were a couple of questions. So Josh asked if uh, we're going to have scripted or just command line builds. Uh, command line builds are already possible. So um, with uh, with Gaia, you get um, Gaia.build.exe. That's, uh, you know, when you go build and you start, that's what you're going to, uh, you know, launch. So if you just give it a command line, like... Uh, uh, let me see. Okay, let me just put this here. So, if you call, uh, let's see, Gaia dot build.exe and then give it. Uh, again, make sure this is always in quotes. You give it C. You know, my folder, my file dot door. It'll work. It'll just take it, build it, and spit it out um, as you have set it in the build manager. So you have to make sure that you set your. Uh, oh, oops, double model. Uh, you have to make sure you have set your options here because you still can't pass it by command line just yet. Uh, so whatever you need to do, just set it here and save, and then you'll be able to uh, just just build it. If you have the enterprise edition, you can save in the open format, which uh, is an XML open format. So you'll be able to modify the entire Gaia file however you wish. Uh, and then, of course, then send it to the command line renderer to build it. Let's see. Uh, Patrick's asking if the terrain model is GPU accelerated. It's not, actually. We're, you're using the GPU to display it and render it, but the actual processing is wholly on the CPU. And, uh, you know, again, with every build, even if we don't mention it in the change log, we've been you know, tweaking away and making things faster. Uh, and I know Daniel's been working hard to improve the erosion code and make that faster as well. So uh, uh, I think we're finally beginning to see the benefits of all those little uh, 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 efficiencies that have been added everywhere and then they combine into uh, faster execution overall. So let's see, any other um, questions while we're still here? Oh, by the way, if um, you guys haven't tried the mutate node, that's pretty awesome. Or sorry, the mute, I'm, I'm calling everything node these days. The mutate button, and it's up here. It used to be down here for a little while. It was somewhere else for a bit. Uh, I probably won't. Let me, let me save this. I'm not going to try it on this. I don't want to lose what we had. I'm just going to go back to, um, I'm going to go back to my nice mountain. Okay, so huh, that didn't refresh. Now that's another bug we've been um, trying to fix. So uh, let's see. Okay, there. So this is my little 
nice mountain and you know, I had everything and set up and then this is what I have and sometimes you just want it to be a bit different uh, so just press the mutate seeds and this will mutate the terrain press yes to go forward you can hold down shift if you're annoyed by this message and it just you know gives you the same terrain in a slightly different shape and uh, it, it sometimes you want like lots of random um, terrains you want to use elsewhere uh, that's a great way to create a bunch of different assets uh, very soon we're gonna have like a option here like a uh, number of variations and so you can put in like that you want like five different variations and the build process will create five different variations just like this for you uh, Timur is asking is there a tiling option for importing into UE4 not yet um, we're actually gonna have the tiled build engine implemented uh, probably by the, um, the end of the year or very early next year so we're gonna release v1 without the tile engine but then it'll come in soon after that um, there are a few efficiency issues so we want to make and, and not just efficiency it's it's unable to hand off data between tiles in certain instances so uh, we figured let's just hold it back make it uh, make it really solid and then put it out but you'll get it uh, in beta form soon enough, um, hopefully by Christmas, if there's time. If not, then um, a couple of weeks after. So, uh, let's see. One more. Okay, I can show you one more thing. Uh, oh, children ask, how would you suggest cutting a road through a mountain? Well, we're working on vector tools. Uh, see, we are. We really are. But we, it's not implemented yet, so... Uh, you could use a mask node instead right now. So I'm going to um, find a mask node. It's all right. It's in selector. So there's my mask. For guidance, I can give it my displaced mountain. Uh, so there, there, I get this. I'm going to turn off feathering. I'm going to make this small. And I can just go road. You can see why I make software and not down planning things. So okay, with this mask, um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in a combiner, and you can do this in two ways. If you want the road to hug the terrain, then just uh, hook it up to the terrain itself, and then start subtracting. So there's a road. Again, no, it's not perfect, but God, what what's the incline on this? Do you need the Batmobile with afterburner to go up here or something? I don't know. Anyway, so you could get this, or if you just want a straight cut through this, then um, create a constant and hook that into the second input. So the constant is this much. And then here, I'm not going to go blend. I'm uh, sorry, I'm not going to do subtract. I'm just going to go blend. And there. This looks like that photo I see every winter in Canada where it's people are driving through like so much snow. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's how you could make a road. This is again, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it properly, but I think you kind of get the idea. Uh, let me get rid of this. I'm going to show you something else. Um, a couple of builds ago, uh, we added a, 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 a bunch of new features in Erosion. And uh, I'm not sure if I many of you have had a chance to um, try it out. So this is how Erosion typically looks. And the new downcutting, uh, or the improved downcutting, I should say, like if I turn that to the max, you can see it starts cutting through. But then if you increase the duration, I'm going to go really high. You can see it starts making it more of a natural mountain shape. Uh, let me get some shadows here so we can see properly. Or even better, let me just uh turn this on it's hyper shading it, it's faked but you can see the shapes maybe that's too fake 
I don't know, it's 1 a.m. My brain's not really working. So it makes it like this. And then I'm going to remove the inhibition. The inhibition basically stops down cutting at certain points. Uh, so I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to make the rock a lot softer. I'm going to increase the strength as well. And maybe decrease the duration a bit because I don't want to destroy this. And there. When you have... Uh, you know a lot of strength a lot of down cutting and uh, you know a decent amount of duration you start getting mountains like this and uh, This is exactly what you would see if you open up Google Earth and go to any of any decent mountain range So that's the kind of natural uh, uh, I don't even know what to call it uh, the well, let's say I don't know what to call it right now because I've been dealing with lots of different terms and geology is not compatible with my brain or rather geological terms are not compatible with my brain. See, that's what I'm doing. I don't know words right now. So basically, this makes mountains look good. Uh, but no, really, it's it's um, you know, we're trying to replicate nature and um, this is all Daniel's erosion so he's been able to make it so that uh, uh, when you have a large mountain receiving a lot of rainfall and the rock is soft and it's there's a lot of down cutting which is like these um, you know these uh, strong lines that you see everywhere and also in real life so when you have that uh, this uh, this is what it starts to look like because this is also what a real mountain would undergo in such circumstances and so with this if I were to increase the inhibition and you can see how fast this is so th that's another uh, really nice improvement so if I remove the in uh, if I inhibit the down cutting a bit you can see the lines aren't that strong there's a bit more soil flow along with the down cutting so that's nice um, I usually like to have it somewhere midway but depending on what you want to do you can go really low like have no inhibition at all and then you get this which is sometimes really cool for maybe if you're making a volcano or uh, you know an aerial map of something and then of course you can go you know very high on the inhibition and then it just looks normal there's no down cutting at all but somewhere in between I think that looks pretty cool and of course you can imagine if you're getting uh, a really cool flow map out of this well, like this, and then also deposits and where, so lots of great color possibilities as well. And then uh, also you get different results with scale. So while, while you have real scale on, which is on by default, it's always processing things like it would in uh, the real world. If you turn it off, you can change the scale of the terrain. You can change the scale of the uh, features, which is basically all these geological shapes and modifications, and also how tall the uh, the terrain is. Now, now, you can do that for the entire terrain here, but that's not what we're trying to do. So, oops, I accidentally applied, and you can see just with these changes, this terrain became very different. And so that's what you can achieve, like, um, with uh, you know, let's say if you're making an alien world or you just want to create something that's believable yet slightly otherworldly even on earth itself so if I go a quarter of the feature scale and apply you can see the the number of features increases because it's subdividing into smaller and smaller features and eroding it as such uh, if I double the verticality they can see more soil flow because it's um, assuming the mountain is taller and a taller mountain would have more um, material debris what have you to flow and then there's of course the terrain scale so I can lower that and then it starts treating it like a smaller scale terrain so you won't get the grooves and um, you won't you'll get a bit more soil flow because that's what happens first the soil will flow and then down cutting happens afterwards uh, when the area is large enough Sean's asking when is the build out and this uh, the erosion stuff specifically is already there we just made it a bit prettier and faster uh, but this build with all the changes is out probably tomorrow morning uh, Pacific time uh, maybe even sooner than that 
Uh, we just have a few bugs to take care of, uh, test a few things, and then it's ready. And you might notice performance mode is now not just uh, a, a checkbox or a toggle. It, you can actually choose how much uh, performance you want. The uh, you know the trade-off, like with anything with performance, is that um, you may get slightly different um, uh, e uh, like erosion features on the terrain. So basically, what it does is it tries to process more in parallel, and when it tries to do uh, uh, parallel processing, what generally happens, like with any parallel processing, is that this area doesn't know what's happening here. So if you have a tall mountain, well, we do have a tall mountain here. If that soil is going to flow all the way here, uh, you know, if you have a lot of performance, um, then it's uh, it, it, there might be some visible artifacting in between. Uh, the soil flows may change a little bit. And we do a lot of blending to make it, uh, uh, you know, very... Uh, unnoticeable uh, but sometimes you can't get that so if quality is something you're going for and you're okay to wait a little bit especially like for the final version then you can go for a slightly lower performance uh, optimization and then of course for off you get the best looking terrains but of course you, you spend a bit more time uh, processing it uh, oh, Shaq is asking when will we get mesh out a mesh output is already there so all you have to do is it's been there for like a couple of builds so you just there's a measure just give this a measure uh, select what format you want I mean, right now we only have OBJ and um, you can even have LODs quads are coming soon um, their scaling uh, stuff is coming soon but right now main thing is select the format choose your vertex count and your level of details that you need then go build and this will save it and it'll create all those meshes for you um, the other things uh, you know I really want to add here is uh, we already have FBX in the works so you'll get um, I think we're sticking with FBX 2014 or 2015 I forget uh, probably 2015 just for compatibility reasons so people who are on slightly older versions of other things can use it and um, uh, in my experience, 2015 was a bit more stable. In any case, everything should be able to com uh, consume it because we're not transporting animation or anything like that. It's just going to be a, a good mesh, that's all. Uh, the other thing I want to add, obviously, is quads and also a hybrid uh, solution. So you can have quads for the most part, but then where you have really fine detail, you can have both triangles and quads so that you can have um, uh, you know that middle ground between uh, uh, you know, having everything be quads and then also losing detail in the same thing. Uh, see, uh, I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, when will the custom resolution out, for example, for Unreal with a special... Re oh, custom resolutions! So, custom resolutions is something we will be adding soon. Uh, uh, but before that, we'll probably add in the drop downs in the build this is probably going to be like not the next build but the build after that um we'll add all the uh the special options for unreal so at least you'll be able to consume that and then custom resolution will come in later although for custom um they will have to be square so the way gaia is built especially for performance uh, purposes it's like you will need to have it be square you can't have um, non-rectangular terrains and there's a bit of trade-off I understand but uh, still I think that will be the best way going forward for uh, uh, you know being able to give you a really good software and so if you need it to be a rectangular terrain I would say just create a square of the largest um, dimension and then just create within it for now uh, the performance will more or less be the same because again it's built for square and uh, uh, so, so for export options apart from resolution we have plenty of things we want to do uh, but right now we're thinking you know it's it's been a while since we're in, we've been in development and uh, we already have more than what we were going to have in v1 
although we also don't have a few things we originally wanted in v1 so the best thing for everyone is we now start finalizing the code make it super stable get it out so everyone can start putting it into their uh, production workflows uh, by christmas hopefully sooner and then uh we'll immediately after the new year's we'll we'll immediately get started on gaia v11 that has tiling that has more stuff in Erosion Studio, that has uh, a bunch of other primitives such as Crater and um, Rivers and several other things that um, they are in prototype right now. Uh, and a bunch of features that we wanted in Gaia V1, but we just said for, you know, it, it's like, it'll take too long uh, to add test and then make sure it integrates with the rest. So we kind of um, kept it in a backlog for later. So we will we will keep adding. I mean, I've said this before, and uh, you know, it's, it's not uh, uh, like a, we don't have like a a very very tight schedule of this, but we do have a regular schedule where uh, every month you will get something. There's going to be at least like one new feature, a couple of small features, lots of fixes and enhancements. So even though Gaia is not a subscription software, we are going to release updates to it like. Uh, subscription software so uh, and of course all of it is free with you know if you if you purchase the the base software then you'll keep getting the updates for free until we hit the next um, big version and uh, so th th there are so many features uh, I think somewhere in the group I posted a, a, a screenshot several months ago of all the features that we want but we haven't been able to implement just yet and the total count as of right now would be somewhere over 400 so there are 400 features we haven't been able to implement yet so we'll be we'll be adding all of those um, quite regularly so let's see any other questions Oh, let's see. I might, I might have missed a couple. So, Aiden asks, "I'd love to have the option to drag nodes on existing wires, hooking and unhooking nodes." Uh, if, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there, that option is already there. It was just causing a bunch of problems, so we made it um, a bit optional. So let's say I want to interject a node here. Then um, let's say, what do we want? We want. Let's go up here and get, oh, let's say I just want to auto level this. So when you drag and drop, just hold down shift. Oops, uh, or you can even do it here. Hold down shift, move it here and it'll just attach itself there. So I think we may need to fine tune this a bit. Uh, it's probably already on the books for the next couple of uh, builds where we're mainly focusing on fine tuning interactions. And so, yeah, this will, this um, interjection should be able to do what you want. Uh, one thing you want to be careful of is not to have too many overlapping lines. Otherwise, it will try to reconnect whatever it overlaps. It's a bit easier if you're using uh, the uh, one of the other, the smaller uh, node styles in this large one. Like it's it's easy to overlap too many things. But at least uh, the you know you should be able to get uh, the basic um, stuff that you need. So, all right, it's almost been an hour, so I'm going to wrap up. Um, if there are any last minute questions, I'm happy to answer. If not, just post it in the comments and, and you know, one of us will get to it. Uh, and uh, I'm really, really eager for you guys to try out this build tomorrow. And, um, you know, give us your feedback. Let us know what you like. Let us know what else we can improve. And, uh, uh, and most of all, we want to see how the new performance improvements work for you guys. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining and, uh, we'll, we'll be back with more stuff very, very soon. And as we start winding down development, I'll try to do more live streams and, you know, talk to you guys and, uh, uh, you know, we can dive into a, a few things, uh, you know, uh, really deeply just, uh, yeah. And, and see how new features can be evolved from that. So thanks again, guys, and uh, see you soon.